stress. Now, is there anybody in the world who never experiences stress? Well, you know what? I bet there are some people, but they'd be very, very rare. I'm going to talk about this subject by sharing a observation that I had that something really happened in my world. See, sometimes life stresses so hard, it can blast you clear out of the water, but only if you let it. Usually we see that truth in others more easily than we do in our own lives. In fact, don't we always see weaknesses that we don't want to recognize or admit existing inside us? Oh, it's real easy to see them in other people. So just be aware, you can't see or feel an emotion, anger, frustration, confusion. You can't witness that in another person unless it exists in you. Now, it might be deeply buried in you, but it has to be there because you're not going to recognize something you don't literally know. So here's a story. I was watching this happen. He was afraid to move. I couldn't tell if he was still alive. He held on for dear life. Have you ever felt so overwhelmed that you were afraid to let go of whatever dream or fantasy you held close to your heart? Were you ever too afraid to let go lest it slip away forever? The wind blew furiously, as it does when you live on a ridge. On the rail of my deck, a squirrel lay motionless. I hoped I would not have to deal with yet another dead animal on my property, especially on my deck. I knew there'd be no clear answer until the wind stopped, or at least died down, which did not happen that night. Much to my relief, the squirrel no longer perched on the deck rail the next morning. Mm, nobody's in the yard. Just the usual scamper of little squirrel feet over my roof. He had something to hold on to. That something got him through the stormy weather, the high winds, the thunder and lightning. He knew not to move. Frankly, I'm certain he would have been blown clear off the deck had he tried to scamper off. As it was, he lay there absolutely still, hunkered down to allow the storm to literally blow over him. All too often, I'll talk with somebody and they could be young, like, just in their thirties. And I'll ask them, what are your dreams? And they said, they didn't have them anymore. Sometimes people give up on their dreams. When the going gets tough and obstacles present themselves, too many people turn away from their dreams. They suppress them so deeply. Eventually they completely give up on ever attempting to fulfill on what may have been a lifelong desire or an unfathomable urge to live or do something important. There are so many people on the planet today. I've been privileged to meet lots and lots and lots of them in the past week. If you don't have a dream, how can you make it reality? Well, the thing is stress takes its toll but only when you allow it to take over your life. No one can take away your dreams. No one can force you to struggle through each day or keep you awake at night worrying and anxious about, about what? What prevents you from falling asleep at night? What theme occupies most of your daytime and definitely bedtime thoughts? Do you feel like you're adrift at sea in desperate need of a lifesaver? Are you looking for somebody to come to rescue? But there's nobody there to throw out the lifesaver. There's no one there to rescue. And maybe that's 
because you're not sharing with anybody how you feel. Maybe it's that it's such a scary prospect to you to let people know how terrified or how lost you feel or how you have no idea how to stay afloat. In fact, as far as you're aware, there's nobody out there, not for you, not to rescue you. Now, if you decided that you could tread water, you could make it safely to shore. When you decide you can make it through the blocks and forge onward to your dreams, then you'll hold tight and keep going. You'll grab onto the log floating by. You'll float downstream easily. Downstream in the direction of your dreams instead of fighting the current, trying to go upstream on your own. Your tenacious grasp, you're never giving up or giving in. That's what allows you to weather any storm. You know, even in the darkest storm, the sun shines. All you have to do is rise above the clouds. When I lived up on that ridge, I could see for about 25 miles. And on every side of me, there were different mountain ranges. And on one of the mountain ranges was a pretty famous ski resort. And it was so intriguing because I could see the storm clouds. And I even learned how to see that it was raining, even when it was that far away. And it was storming. And at the same time, above those storm clouds, I saw the sun shining brightly. Have you ever been in an airplane and you took off and it was pouring rain, but the plane quickly climbed up above the clouds and what did you see? You saw the sun was shining. So there's always sun shining. Do you allow yourself to remember that, to allow yourself to look for it. You will always and only see what you expect to see. If you expect to see that sunshine by pursuing what you have to do by taking the steps that you haven't taken yet, you will see that sun shining. Oh, but the other piece of that is only if you accept that as a possibility in your reality. So many people have shut down what they deem possible in their world. So who's keeping them stuck? Who's creating the obstacles keeping them from living their dreams? They are. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. When I worked in crisis care, and I was attacked and suffered a pretty bad brain injury. There were 16 people on my medical team and every one of them said, I couldn't get better. One of them actually spoke the words, this is as good as it gets, learn to live with it. And my functioning was so, so poor and so devastating <laughs> trying to get through each life. I was sometimes feeling suicidal. It was really bad. Like, how can I go on with this? And then one day I said to myself, wait a minute. I'm not buying into their paradigms. That's their paradigm that I can't get better. That's their experience that when they worked with people who had similar injuries, that the people didn't recover. And you know what I believe? And I believe this was all my being. They couldn't recover because the doctors, who so many people put someone in a white coat forth as a godlike creature who has all the answers and who's always right. So they don't question. They just go along with whatever the doctor says is going to happen. That's a choice. And when I couldn't find the assistance I needed, 
I asked the universe to help me. And what the universe did was it brought me person after person after person who were in healing modalities that I hadn't previously known existed. So in my belief system, I was accepting stuff that were never part of my reality before. Are you willing to be open to investigate something that you never heard of before? Will everything work? Will all the modalities that came to me, did all of them advance me? Actually, every single one of them did, even if it was a tiny step. And most importantly, the ones dealing with my mindset and with my belief system and what I thought possible for me. Don't you think those are the modalities that allowed me to do the fastest and the most complete healing? You only allow into your world what you believe is possible. There was a... Uh, hmm, well, he was definitely, a, yes, he was a successful businessman. He wasn't a psychologist. But back in the early 1900s, and there seemed to have been such an influx of mindset people. There was Napoleon Hill and Wallace D. Waddles and Charles Hanel. And this man, Claude Bristol, wrote a book called The Magic of Believing. And he delivered a talk. TNT. Yes, it was TNT. So the combination of those two books really brought home for me. And I just discovered this a couple of years ago. And since I work with people to assist their belief systems, and why would you want to? I highly recommend. They're very, very short reads. And that's Claude Bristol, The Magic of Believing. And TNT, It Rocks Your World. I think that's a brilliant title because what does TNT do and what do you need to do to your world to make a change? You need to shake up your belief system, get the mess out of the way, let it fall away. The stuff is keeping you stuck. Let it fall away because then you can see. You can see the sun shining above the clouds when all you're looking up and you're beneath the clouds. You can't see them. Ah, but if you have the knowledge in your heart, that sun is shining and you can get there. I know that people, because the, there'd be this bad weather, but even though I was so far away, well, I had binoculars and I could see that there was traffic, even going up in the storm. Because people knew when they got above the rain, up higher, up the mountain, there was sunshine. And they could still engage in their fun activities and their skiing. And this particular resort, people go up there in the summer. And I, I never did, but I heard some people would go up there with a, a cardboard box they'd flattened. And they go down the slopes on the cardboard box. So creativity allows you to move out of whatever stress you have. And I think the biggest part of that is being open to the messages coming from the universe, coming from your guides, coming from your angels in each moment, connecting you where. You want to go and you get there one step at a time. So when you follow the first one, as I did with the first modality, and it made some progress, the next one appeared and I made more progress and the next one and so on and so on until I was able to recover to about, I'd say it was about 95% of how I used to be. Oh, and just... Just a quick note, one of the things that happened to me in the brain injury was I developed dyslexia. So if you read my writing and if it hasn't been edited by an outside source, which my emails don't get edited unless I remember to do it, 
I do a whole lot better now. And you can figure out what I'm saying. But I'll tell you what, I went from being somebody really brilliant who learned everything easily and instantly to, I usually had all the right letters of the word in the word, but not in any kind of order that you can figure out. Now, today, the dyslexia shows up. I usually mix up the first two letters or two letters that are side by side. So the point I'm making is when you choose to move beyond the stress and only when you choose to move beyond the stress will you succeed. And one way to do that is look for the gifts. A uh, saying that's becoming more popular today is nobody and nothing happens to you. Everything happens for you. And that is so true because I went from somebody being rather focused, incredibly serious. And though I was outside of mainstream psychology at the time, I was following the rules so long as I was working in a mainstream place, right? But I could never have healed. I could never have improved. I had no way that I was going to be okay with living the way I was if I wasn't looking for the gifts. And when I told that to the psychologist at the Brain Rehab Center, he very quickly responded, the only people he ever saw heal their brain injuries, recover from them, were the people who look for the gift. See, one thing I learned is healing doesn't mean you get to be how you used to be. It means accepting where you are and how you are and moving forward from there. So after brain surgery, when I completely lost my ability to talk, I had to learn to get my voice up and working. And then I had to learn how to speak because much of my mouth was paralyzed. So I would still make my videos because I made videos every week and I've been doing it, I think, for more than a decade. I have a lot of videos out there. Sometimes it took many takes because I'd open my mouth and no words, no sound would come out. So I'd do it again and again until the sound came out and my voice sounded even more scratchy than it does now. And my voice came out so I could share. And I believe that my sharing, well, I don't just believe it because people would write to me and people would tell me that because of my sharing, they were able to make life changes. Now, something else that happened, which was, well, some people said, I have no right to complain about the things that are wrong in my life. And they were saying, because compared to you, they're nothing. That is so, so, so putting yourself in a box from which you have a good excuse not to escape. If something's bothering you, why would you let it continue to bother you? It's a choice. You choose a new way to be. You become someone you've never been. That will give you thoughts you've never thought before. When you're thinking different thoughts, you're going to feel different emotions that allow you to take actions you've never taken before. And that's how you take each step in a new direction. It's your choice to stay stuck. And it's also your choice to move forward. So even if you think it's a little issue, heck, if it's an issue that's blocking you and stopping you from being all you can be, what you owe the world is being the best you possible. That's all you owe 
the world. Because when you're the best you possible, your energy shifts to one of love. And we come here to know love and to know happiness. And when you're able to stop blocking yourself from it, you'll see happiness is your natural way of being. It's who you really are. That's something that I became very, very aware of is if you have a question, chances are you're not the only one and chances are there are many, many people who are either afraid to ask. I know a lot of people have a fear of speaking up because I don't know why. So I'm not going to venture, I guess. It's like so many people have a fear of being on camera and they have such extraordinary gifts to share. Well, you can share your gifts on video without being on camera. So I happen to be somebody who loves to be on stage and I love to be on camera and I can really communicate easily with people. So would it surprise you if I'm in a room, like at a party, that's about the scariest place for me to be. You put me on stage, you put me in front of a camera, you put me in front of a class I'm teaching, and I am home. But at a party, in a room full of people that I may or may not know, scary. So what I did was made the choice to speak to people. I used to just stay quiet and wait for somebody to talk to me. And then I thought, well, this is stupid. It looks like everybody's having fun. How am I gonna have fun if I don't talk to people? And so I started. And then every time I did it, it was easier. It's making the choice. The same thing for making a choice to follow your dreams. The bottom line is the universe wouldn't allow those dreams into your reality without also presenting the synchronicity that can take you step by step by step to fulfill those dreams. I have a podcast. It's called Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and mind. And two of my favorite guests, two of my favorite interviews were people who are very successful in how they can work to assist people to improve their lives. And each one of them said, I just went out and I did the next step. And then the universe showed me the next step and the next step. Well, one of them called it steps. The other one called them nudges. Following the nudge. That's the universe. That's your guides. That's your angels talking to you. If you're experiencing stress in your world, you're choosing to stay stuck there. You can make a different choice. I wish you a day filled with blessings. And I guarantee you that they're allow them in and enjoy every moment. That's I N capital J O Y.